So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for your kind introduction. Um, today I want to show you the results of a subject study we conducted for the identification of parameters required for the implementation and design of a uh, driver assistance system which aims at a very specific scenario which is well known to all of us, overtaking maneuvers. Therefore, the title of my talk is Assessment of Adequate Overtaking Margin for an Overtaking Assistance System. First of all, a short outline of my um, presentation. Um, to begin with, I will give you a motivation why drivers need assistance while executing overtaking maneuvers. Then, after a short introduction to the research corporation ProRETA, I will show you the basic principles of an overtaking assistance system as a result of the project ProRETA 2. Then I will proceed to the main part of my presentation, the definition and, identif and identification of um, parameters required for the design and um, implementation of the proposed system. And um, to finish, I will give you a short summary of my talk. So why do drivers need support within the overtaking task? When we take a look at um, certain traffic accident statistics of some uh, countries in Europe and connect those figures to um, results from examinations of uh, traffic accident situations on a um, rural road, we can come to the conclusion that the share of fatalities dying within overtaking situations is um, in the magnitude of about 5%. So against the um, background of the general social goal to um, avoid any deadly accident, um, as well as against the background of the massive improvements we've seen in um, vehicle safety in recent years, this um, is a quite considerable number. This is the case, presumably, um, of the high relative velocities um, of the cars involved in overtaking situations. So what are the reasons for those accidents um, which do um, obviously happen? Um, again, we can examine certain um, scientific publications which all point to a single point. And this point is that the average driver is simply not capable uh, of making a correct assessment of the riskiness of an overtaking um, scenario. To do this in an accurate way, it would be necessary for the driver to make a judgment of um, the distance to the nearest oncoming car, as well as um, to make a judgment of the relative velocity to that car. And um, obviously, it is also necessary for the driver to make a prediction uh, about how long will it take to um, get beyond the car in front of him. So um, you can imagine those um, three tasks are um, very, very challenging to perform for the driver. And um, Therefore, the overtaking task is, is a quite hard one. So to overcome those um, limitations by the human um, perception system, um, like I stated, uh, with, the, with those um, three tasks, uh, in 2006, a project um, has been started within the research corporation ProRETA, um, with the title ProRETA uh, 2, Overtaking Assistance. And the major objective of that project was the uh, definition and um, implementation of a driver assistance system which is able to enhance driving safety in uh, those overtaking scenarios. The cooperation is between the automotive supplier uh, Continental and the Technische Universität uh, Darmstadt. The uh, project itself is an interdisciplinary one uh, which comprises the knowledge of three different departments of the university we have uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, as uh, well as team members from the computer science department. So as the central goal is to overcome the limitations given um, by the human uh, perception um, system, of course, we have to give the car the ability to uh, perceive its surrounding in a way so that the system is able to make such an um, assessment of the riskiness of the overtaking situation um, in a better way than the human uh, can do this. For that purpose, we uh, use two sensors. One sensor is an automotive video camera in, uh, behind the windscreen, which is um, attached to a computer vision algorithm, and that package aims for the detection of cars um, within the range of about uh, 100 meters. For the detection um, of cars which are far away, oncoming cars in uh, large distances, we have used an automotive um, 
radar sensor, um, which has been modified so that it can um, accomplish that challenging task. And um, with respect to the uh, distances we can detect cars in, um, this has a performance of about uh, 400 meters distance. So how does the system um, actually works? We see on top of that slide a typical initial situation of an overtaking maneuver. We see have one car following another. And now the whole um, situation becomes uh, potentially dangerous because we have oncoming traffic. So if the driver now is about to start an overtaking uh, maneuver, the system is able to make a prediction about the further progress of that um, situation. And um, by doing this, it is, of course, um, possible also to detect possible conflict situations with the oncoming um, traffic, like, um, like it is um, depicted here in a quite drastical way. So if the, such a conflict situation is detected by the system, the system is able to give a, dri a warning to the driver at a very early stage of the overtaking maneuver so that the driver can um, terminate the maneuver all by himself and um, we have the effect that a potentially dangerous situation is um, evaded in a rather safe way. So that is the warning to the driver uh, almost at the beginning of the overtaking maneuver. So to give you a better impression how the system works, I will show you a short video. It is a recording from the inside of the realized prototype um, vehicle. Um, is a recording from the from a test track with a defined dangerous um, overtaking situation. That means the oncoming car is still um, too close for a safe overtaking progress. And let's see how the system reacts. So we see the driver is about now to overtake that car. And uh, if you make the swing out process, we see that there is an oncoming car. The driver gets a warning uh, in that visual um, display, which is not optimized in any way, um, but it is only facilitated to make a demonstration about how the system works. The driver uh, terminates uh, the maneuver, and so the dangerous situation is evaded. So now let's take a closer look about how the system comes to um, the decision whether to warn the driver or not. Um, as already stated, the system makes a prediction about the um, overtaking um, progress, which, is, um, which, which lies in front of the, of, of the situation. And um, by doing this, uh, also a prediction is possible about a very um, central value. And this value is called uh, the overtaking margin OM, and it represents a temporal distance similar to a TTC. That, um, Temporal distance uh, can be identified as the uh, values similar to a TTC of the overtaking car um, to the oncoming car at the end of the overtaking maneuver. That end, uh, that point of time uh, of the overtaking uh, end is identified by the complete re-entrance of the overtaking car into its own lane. That value can be considered as a safety parameter because obviously when that value is low, um, then the situation becomes more dangerous. So when we make a prediction about the overtaking margin, all the system has to do is to apply a certain predefined um, threshold to come to a decision whether to warn or not. And um, connected with this, of course, the question arises which is an appropriate value for a threshold. Um, which we can choose so that we can um, gain maximum acceptance um, for potential users of that, of that system. So to get a um, valid number of that um, parameter, we have used two approaches. One approach, is, uh, one approach um, aims at the minimum overtaking margin. We have there the prediction situation. That means if the predicted value is below the predefined threshold, the driver will get a warning. And when we now assume that we choose the threshold at a very low value, for instance, about 0.1 second, then we can imagine very tight overtaking situations where there's no actual danger of a collision. But of course, most drivers won't assess those situations as, as safe ones. So if the system uh, doesn't utter a warning in those situations, we get a false negative error. The uh, driver gets the impression the situation is too narrow. Why hasn't the system warned me? So the second approach is uh, aimed at the maximum overtaking margin. 
we can now assume that we choose the value, uh, the, the threshold value at a very, uh, uh, we can choose it very large. And um, we can imagine now situations which are perfectly safe. That means the um, oncoming car is still very far ahead. And um, the system uh, utters a warning due to the large uh, chosen threshold. And so we have a false positive error. That means the driver gets the impression, why has there been a warning when overtaking is now obviously trouble free? So now when we um, take a look at the expected um, progression of those two errors, um, with respect to the chosen threshold, we would expect the following courses. For the false negative risk, um, it would be expected that it would uh, be go this way. That means the share of people who um, get the impression of a error type, um, false positive or false negative, in certain situations, um, will increase with a smaller threshold and the false positive risk will go the other way around. So if we now can get such a figure, not uh, in an abstract way like the one uh, shown here, but based on real numbers, it would be possible to uh, make a considerable uh, design of the, um, of, of, of the overtaking assistance system. This is because if we define a certain threshold level, it would be possible directly to deduce the respective OM uh, threshold levels which allow to stay always below that um, required uh, error threshold. So the main goal is to get those two lines based on real numbers. For that, we um, have designed two uh, different uh, test drives. The first test drive um, aims at the minimum overtaking margin, uh, respectively the red line. Um, the, the situation is so that the subject is in a vehicle overtaking another. We have a head-on situation with oncoming traffics, uh, traffic, and um, the subject has been advised to, advised to swing back to its own lane as late as possible, but early enough so that a predefined danger level is not exceeded. So from the examination of the uh, maneuvers by the subject, um, we can uh, cumulative, with a cum cumulative uh, consideration, we get to the red line. So for the blue line, um, we have a similar situation. Um, here also the uh, subject overtakes another vehicle, but at a certain point in time of the maneuver, there is an overtaking request by the test manager, which is also in the um, overtaking car. Um, and uh, that means if you assess the situation as absolutely safe, overtake, otherwise um, not. Now, um, some situations are so that the uh, subject overtakes and some situations are so that the driver uh, comes to the decision that it is too dangerous. When we make an examination of the maneuvers already uh, uh, executed, actually executed, then um, we can uh, get to the progression of the blue line. So a few basic information about the subject tests um, conducted. Of course, um, by picking the test subjects, we have tried to avoid um, cluster sampling effects by the definition of uh, three criteria, um, the uh, age of the drivers, the uh, driving experience, as um, well as, its, as the gender. And if we now um, have the requirement for each possible combination to have at least two um, representatives, we come to a required number of, of 24 subjects, which um, have been acquired within an age uh, spectrum from 18 to 63 years. And um, the uh, tests have been conducted during last year. So now in this slide, we see a um, general uh, result of the conducted experiments. This is the uh, connected uh, figure to the one uh, we have seen in an abstract way a few slides before with the red and blue lines, but now actually based on real numbers. So what is the first impression we get from um, that uh, two lines? They um, are exactly like the ones um, we, we have expected. A second fundamental um, result is that we cannot choose an overtaking margin threshold which allows us to bring both error types um, to zero concurrently. This is a very important result of the tests conducted. And um, if we now want to make a recommendation about how uh, should the threshold be um, determined for an uh, overtaking assistance system like the one um, shown here, 
um, then we are of the opinion that uh, a very well-balanced way to do um, this would be at the intersection of those two lines. And if we do this, we um, get the conclusion that uh, an, a value of 1.6 seconds would be an appropriate one. So now I'm almost at the um, end of my presentation. I will give you a short um, summary. I um, showed you the motivation why drivers need support within the overtaking um, task. Um, I've also shown you um, that within the project Poreta 2, we have introduced an assistance concept which, um, may, uh, which may improve the driving safety in those situations. And um, to make a valid system design, we uh, need a certain parameter, the overtaking margin um, threshold, which has been identified um, in over 680 test drives with 24 subjects. One fundamental result, we have no possible um, zero error system design of a, uh, an overtaking assistance like the one shown here um, possible. And a second fundamental result is that a recommended value um, is, in a, yeah, is, is about 1.6 seconds for a, an appropriate threshold. Of course, additionally, uh, additionally when um, the system designer makes adjustments to the threshold uh, which he chooses, it is due to the, um, to the figure we have shown in the last slide, um, able to make a deduction about which effect has uh, that change in um, the expected error levels, respectively um, false positive and false negative. So now I'm at the end of my presentation. I want to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward for an interesting discussion. Thank you.